talk about this. Uh, we definitely got to talk about this. Uh-huh. Everybody get ready. I'm just setting up some screens here so I can see the chat. That's all. Get comfortable. You got a little bit of time to run, grab some chips, water, use the bathroom. Do so now. Everybody in the room, go ahead and uh, hit the like button, hit the hearts, hit the share button. It's about to get ugly. It's about to get real ugly. <laughs> Type Hotep in the box on Periscope. I see you. You know how we get down. We got to give you a shout out. If you type Hotep in the box, if you're a regular, you already know that. Mad love to the people. Uh, let me see how I'm going to bring this in. Um, I got to get my YouTube people. Shout out to the YouTube people. Ploppy, Ploppy, I see you. Matthew Parry, I see you. Lauren, what up? Elon, what up? What up, my people? I hope y'all feeling good out there. I know I'm feeling good. So, the other day, I wrote this article. The idea just kind of like just popped into my mind randomly. I think it was like the day before. And, uh... Actually, no, I'm lying. This was on my to-do list. And I think I was compiling this since last year because this was on my old swipes. I used the swipes app. This is on my old to-do list. I was looking through my to-do list like, what's in here? What's a good project I could work on? And I found that. And I was like, ah, I never did this. So I said, let's do this. Let's do this. It's published on hotapnation.com. It's called or titled. How to infiltrate the right wing as a black conservative. It's like the easiest thing in the world to do. It's like taking candy from a baby. <laughs> it's so simple because people have uh, ideologies that they hold on to tightly. Let me reiterate. People have ideologies that they hold on to too tightly. I hope everybody understands that. When people hold on to these ideologies, it's easier to trigger their confirmation bias. It's easy to make them your friend. I was in the music biz. I used to work for 50. I know what it's like working in the music biz. Shout out to fifth. In the music biz, Everybody's just kissing ass. So if a black person wanted to enter the ring and join the ranks, the bar to get in is not set high at all. Some people took this as a jab. I took this as you should be thanking me. I did you a favor. I pointed out the weakness in your army. Why? Because like I've been saying for years, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you not get infiltrated. Where am I to go if I'm not welcome on the left? If I'm not welcome on the left, and the only place that even closely aligns with my own ideology is the right, and I go to the right and the right's being infiltrated, what am I to do if the right is the closest place I have to home outside of Africa? What am I to do in this political arena? Obviously, I got to help. Obvious, obviously, I got to help. So what are the rules? Everybody in the, in the YouTube, hit the like button. If you want to shout out or ask a question, hit the super chat. Always appreciate it. Let's get into this thing. First thing you got to understand, in order to infiltrate the right, you need to play up Christianity. It's very sneaky. It's very, very sneaky. 
and I, I, I watched it and I seen so many people just like, just like, are these cats like really Christian? Like they really believe this or is this like marketing? And as a marketer, I'm like, these niggas some marketers. <laughs> these niggas, these niggas some marks. <laughs> but it's like people latch on to their spiritual identity sometimes a lot of the times more than anything else. So when you can relate to somebody through their religion or appease somebody by you know, re relating to their religion and promoting their religion and, 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 and creating that brotherhood with them, but you're doing it under false identity, it becomes devious. Then the other side, and this is in my books, in my book, booksbybrian.com, my Twitter marketing book, is they've created the dichotomy. So it's not only do you have Christianity, but you have to have its, its enemy, its counter. It's positive and negative. It's yin to the yang, which is Islam. So in order for people to rally the troops, they play up Christianity and downplay Islam. Now, I'm not saying Islam is innocent. Oh, no, Islam's not innocent. I've dropped several lectures and tweets about how Islam crippled Africa and how Africans have allowed Islam to cripple our brotherhood. So I'm not saying Islam is innocent. Nobody's innocent. All I'm saying is watch for the jokes. They play up the Christianity. Hold on, let me give a shout out real quick. Hotep Lauren in the building. Uh, DC numerology. That's the homie right there. But when you create this dichotomy, it's really easy to control people. Now, as you know, in order to be a good conservative, you got to attack people and the figures. So, of course, Rashida Taleb and Ilhan Omar and Louis Farrakhan are going to be targets. And I'm not absolving them of any guilt. Objective. Just pointing things out. Then there's this one stance where you have to be pro-Israel. That goes for the left and the right. You must be pro-Israel. <laughs> Those are just the facts. This is how you infiltrate the right. Now, as a black person, in order to infiltrate the right, you have to no longer identify as black unless you're talking about votes, the black vote. Unless you're talking about being a black conservative, unless you're juxtaposing it to liberal racism, if you're not doing any of these things, the right won't like it. There's no room for black self-determination in the white right. They don't want it. They don't like it. And they probably shouldn't. If I was white, I might not like it. It's a threat. I'm just speaking objectively here, speaking historically here. So I don't blame them, but facts are facts. Let's call a spade a spade. Let's stop playing around. Let's stop playing the games, beating around the bush, playing political games. Nah, Hotep, she's just going to give you that real. So you have to drop your race. Drop Africa. Drop the Caribbean. Drop all of that. Drop your Afro Latina or whatever is popping right now. Latin X or whatever y'all calling it. Drop all of that. You're an American now. You're an American. You have to identify as an American. I watched a black girl with dark skin say on the Twitters that she not African. She says she American. Now, whether she believe that or not, I don't know. I think she's just misled because she doesn't know her identity. She doesn't know her history. Black people in America don't know the history. Or she could just be infiltrating the right. <laughs> and that's just the game. Now, I'm not saying that 
if she's ignorant to the facts that she's doing it, um, and, and I guess guilty. Now I think she's very innocent in, in, in her identification. I think a lot of blacks when they don't identify with Africa, I think they're very innocent in their nature, but it's just ignorance. You know, ignorance is bliss, but if you are black, don't talk about it. They don't want to hear it. When it comes to the issue of black on black violence, play that up, play that up heavy. I'm guilty of that, but I'm guilty of that because I've been guilty of that. Before this whole Trump thing popped off, Hotep Jesus was called Hotep because I was the main one talking about, yo, how you complaining about white people when we killing ourselves? But how you get white people is you got to use the keyword Chicago. It's like a trigger word and marketing. They teach you about t- trigger words. For the white right, a trigger word is Chicago black on black violence, even though the murder rate is much higher in other places. Now, they'll try and say, well, the total deaths. But then we have to look at population and then you start seeing things come back to make more sense when you talk about higher rates like Baltimore and St. Louis. Even in my own state of New Jersey, Trenton is more crazy than Chicago. So Chicago is a trigger word. If you want to infiltrate the right. Chicago is a trigger word. Now, going back to what I was saying before, now that you're infiltrating the right, you are supposed to be attacking your left wing people. You got to attack your left wing people. If you can attack Obama, attack Obama. Great target. Another trigger word. Republicans, right wing conservatives, they hate Obama. You can get that off all day. You get a million retweets. Say something bad about Obama. Get a million retweets. Hotep Jesus, what's my stance on Obama? I like the motherfucker. I like Obama. I've said this a million times. I think he's the greatest liar on the planet. I think he played the greatest role of a president to just come out and lie to us a million fucking times. Like he needs to be in Hollywood the way he was acting up in the office. But I like the motherfucker. I think it takes a lot of balls to do what he did. I think Being president is not as easy as people try to make it seem, especially when you were Barack Obama. But that's also because I'm woke about a lot of how all this politics shit work. But we're not going to get into that right now. Stay on topic. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, a.k.a. AOC, a.k.a. I'm running the train on Congress, a.k.a. my boo. (laughs) <laughs> easy target you go after her a million retweets they're gonna fall for it every time you see my stance my stance is the opposite when you look at these stances and people had the nerve to say that i was telling on myself in this article but if you look at my stances on the things in this article i'm almost the exact opposite on almost all the points i'm, I'm or i'm just somewhere completely different like the obama situation i'm just i don't agree with none of y'all I'm in my own space. I look at Obama completely different than everybody. I like Alex. I think she says some good things. I think her socialism is terrible. I also believe that they're not going to give her enough stain to install socialism or anything else. They'll just use her to help install it. But it's our job. It's our job to elect the right people in office to fight our battle. We can't be complaining about some little girl that just showed up in Congress last week. She ain't got that much power. Them girls and them Democrat girls don't like her. They're going to act real catty. They jealous because she fine and she got power and she popping on Twitter. All the women is jealous. That's how women move. They just move jealousy. They're going to be catty. She got no power, dog. She's nothing to be afraid of. And y'all keep giving her more power. But she's an easy target if you want to appease the white right. Another thing I threw in here, I kind of threw in as a joke. But I said, you got to keep your white voice on at all times. It's like that movie, Sorry to Bother You, where, I don't know if you guys saw it, but it's a fucking funny movie, crazy, weird-ass plot, oh my god, twist. I liked it. I really liked the movie. I'd watch it again, actually. As silly as it was, I'd watch it again. Great movie, I think. Um, But you got to have your white voice. Keep your white voice on at all times. Now, 
If you don't have a white voice, you got to do the complete opposite. Go completely black. Go completely ignorant. Add some fried chicken to the picture and they're going to love you. Just act really niggerish, but say you love Trump and they'll love you because that type of black mind is no threat at all. They look at you as, oh, he, intellectually, he can't spar with me, so he's no threat. That's a, a, a non-threatening black male. So they'll love that. You could play that role up all day. Now, you follow those rules, and you, too, can be on Fox News in no time. Now, I just want to read this last part here, which was a P.S., to the white conservatives that may read this or have read this or will read this. Anyone who would like to not be manipulated by the opportunist black conservatives should study themselves. Do you latch on to every talking head that agrees with you and confirms your bias? Or do you vet the people you support by judging their heart and authenticity? Because if you fall in love with every political darling who agrees with you, you are no different than a woman or a girl who takes everything a man or a boy says at face value only to be heartbroken later. Niggas will tell you anything to get in your drawers. Niggas will tell you anything to get in your drawers. And that's just the facts of the matter. Niggas will tell you any. So these these politicians will tell you anything to get in your pockets. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And you keep allowing yourselves to prop up more new establishment type motherfuckers just because they black. They establishment. I'm tired of the black establishment. I had to deal with it on the left. Now I got to deal with it on the right, yo. Y'all can't vet y'all blacks on the right. Y'all damn sure can't vet your, le your, your whites on the left or the right. And you can't vet your blacks. Like, come the fuck on, yo. I'm just a dude in New Jersey that could figure this shit out and y'all can't. This shit's really frustrating. So one of my followers, she said to me, she said, so what's the solution? Like, like, can you explain to white people or white conservatives how they could not be uh, so easily fooled by the infiltrating black conservative? So I came up with some ideas. Number one, find people that deviate from the things I just said. Find people who aren't Christian. Be more open minded into the people. Y'all stop people right there. You'd be like, oh, they're not Christian. Oh, I can't fuck with them. You know how many great people you throw out because you're dogmatic, even though your book tell you not to be dogmatic. Your, your book tell you to be accepting. But you throw people out. It's a lot of good Islamic motherfuckers that'll help y'all out. But as soon as y'all hear Islam, y'all y'all tune them out. Not realizing that's a great potential ally you just passed up because you're so stuck on your spiritual beliefs. Like I said before, I don't like Christianity and I don't like Islam. But I'll fight for you to have a right to worship your religion. Because I don't think everybody worships Islam. In their religion the same. I think some people do it artificially. And I think some people do it authentically. So I don't want to say. Let's throw out the religion. And now the people doing authentic authentically. Have no Bible. No we can't do that to them. We can't do that to them. But we have to stop thinking dogmatically. Bottom line. Find people that deviate from. What's another point I made without getting too dicey without <laughs> fine pro black motherfuckers fine is hoteps man like the real authentic hotep community to the conscious community fuck with them fuck with Sarnetta fuck with Shaka Akmos fuck with General Seti fuck with Young Pharaoh Fuck with Tory Nix. Huh? Fuck with authentic, real, African-centered P. 
people because what you have is the people who have a pride, have pride in themselves, which means they're not going to care enough to be complaining about white people. Isn't that what y'all want? Y'all want us to stop complaining about white people? Y'all don't want us to be your problem? So find people who who are just so focused on themselves, and that's people that are African-centered, real black people, black people that don't want to be a part of your white system. Black people that want to be a part of your white system ain't black. I said it, and I don't care who don't like it. Black people that want to be a part of your silly system ain't black. They're culturally European. They're culturally white. You're white. Fucking white. I said it. I said it earlier. If you don't identify with Africa, you an enemy to me. Any black person that doesn't identify with Africa, the Caribbean, you're an enemy to me. I don't care how you take it. It is what it is. Point number two. Fuck with people that present ideas. Fuck with people that present ideas. I brought to you CoinBitsApp.com. You can buy Bitcoin. You can invest in Bitcoin with your spare change. Long term dollar cost averaging. Brought you Hotep Nation. Hotep do dudes. Uncle Hotep. Hotep Cote d'Ivoire. Phoenix, Jordan, Great Minds. What else did we bring you? Jiffatize. Jiffatize. Rip your gifs and videos straight from Twitter. Fuck with people who are building something. We building something over. Hotep Nation is building over here. Y'all not paying attention. Y'all fucking with people who want to be a part of this system. The same system who's going to fucking deplatform us. We're over here building systems on decentralized blockchain technology. And y'all over here worried about these other motherfuckers who ain't building shit. I don't even like Gab. Gab built a social network that was a perfect place for right wing conservative motherfuckers. What did the, the establishment conservatives do? They tried to promote a whole nother social network and it flopped and it flopped. But y'all keep following and establish it, motherfuckers, instead of fucking with people who are creating and building and, and bringing new ideas. Fuck with the people that are creating ideas. If these people are on Twitter all day just talking about, oh, you know, the border, illegal immigrants, and, you know, oh, praise Jesus. Like, yeah, we heard all them talking points. What's new? What's new? You sound like CNN to me. You sound like CNN to me. A broken record on CNN. That's what you sound like to me. Number three. Spread love. Spread love. I don't know what this dude's name is on YouTube. Sent me the super chat. I appreciate you. I can't say a name. Jack something. Uh... Something about in charge of the Proud Boys taking it over. I don't know what you said. If you could retype that or translate that, I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Number three, spread love. Y'all love the motherfuckers that attack your enemy all day. Y'all fall for it. That's basic marketing. Why do y'all fall for that? I understand we have to be on attack sometimes, but is it all the time? When do we spread love? When do we spread love and show love to the people in our circle? There's a lot of people that, that need love. Number four, how to spot somebody that might not be infiltrating. They display objectivity. They disagree with your ass sometimes. A motherfucker being honest with you is a person that's going to disagree with you sometimes. Sometimes I go out and I be around people. And it's real easy for me to make a friend because I'll just agree with everything they say for the sake of not wanting to argue. But 90% of the shit that they're saying, I'm just like, I could rebuttal, but for the sake of saving energy and to not offend somebody who could be a snowflake, I let it ride. I let it ride. Out in public. I just like, oh, okay, you know, it's cool. I just listen. I just listen to people and listen to what they say. I try not to argue. Right. 
But when it's talking about people who are going to lead us, we got to we got to vet those people. It's not just some walking Joe Schmo off the street. We got to find people that are disagreeing with us and then having that discourse back and forth. Trying to come to a middle conclusion. That's how you can spot a motherfucker, period. Who on the left and the right is willing to say, can we come to an agreement? Both sides won't even say that. Y'all acting like some little babies. Both sides won't even say, hey, guys, I just want to come to an agreement. Nobody's nobody's being the adult in the room. Why? Because they need the game to keep going to keep us divided left and right. That's why. Because they need that to keep going. CNN eating crazy off these ratings. Fox eating crazy off these ratings. Everybody's eating crazy off Trump and Trump hate. Everybody eating crazy. Mad money's mad money's being made right now. But are you dealing with the people that are thinking objectively? If y'all got questions, save them because I'm going to answer them after this last point. Number five, which I kind of related to on number four, where I said spread love, but identify the people that are not always on attack mode. We're the people that's not always on attack mode. It seems like everything that somebody tweets has to be in opposition to the Democrats. And it's just like, oh, 100 retweets. Oh, 100 retweets. And I've tested it before. I'm like, yeah, I really like this shit. This shit's like kind of like simple. It's kind of like first grade. yo. And I'm just like, it's weird. You know what I mean? So then I feel weird, right? So then I feel weird and I'm just like, so now I got a bunch of people following me that think I think a certain way. So once a month, I got to go and just purge them and let them know, like, I don't think like you. And either you going to like that or you not, but I'm not going to allow a bunch of phony motherfuckers to follow me. I'm not going to allow you to follow me thinking that we're the same. We are not the same. We were not created equally. We will never be equal. Two types of people in this world. Subjective thinkers and objective thinkers. Best people in this world are objective thinkers. If you can't never enter your objective mind, are you even alive? Somebody tweet that. If you can't access your objective mind, are you even alive? You're not conscious. You're not conscious. I'll take questions now. Before I depart, I hope y'all enjoyed my Periscope. I appreciate all the uh, all the love in the chat. Shout the Lipster Davis. With Lipster Davis said, "I uh, I woke up on fire today. I did. I had to. I had to smash Twitter. I had to. I had to come and just you know. Anybody in GG thirty three know why today's the day for this." Is is Twitter in this world, though? Man, Twitter is the simulation. A lot of people say Twitter ain't real life. You're right. Twitter is what life is going to be. <laughs> it's not life yet. They are engineering it from there. Catholic church child abuse scandal. Does it matter? Absolutely, it matters. Check my old tweets. Been talking about that. Been talking about the Pope. Last Pope had to step down because of that. What's my take on Snoop Dogg's overall thoughts on Trump? Snoop's old. Like, it's like trying to teach technology to a baby boomer. You know what I mean? Like, they just not going to get it. Like, a lot of, like, boomers don't even get social media. Like, you tweet something and they be all in their feelings. You be like, dog, this is the internet. Where have you been? Like, you just got to the internet last week? You know what I mean? So, like, I don't even pay attention to Snoop's stance because he's just old. He's like church people. He, he, he like church people. You know, church people, they going to believe in what they believe in. And, you know, uh, you know, black church people to go and vote Democrat because that's who keep coming. Do I like Trump? Yes, I like Trump. I like Trump the same reason why I like Obama. Because I don't care about none of this shit. I care about people. 
I re- I'm, I'm one of the few people that realize that the president is inept. <laughs> Y'all looking at the president. President don't run America. Donald Trump don't run America. I'm reading. I'm just. I'm just reading the comments. Yeah, boomers are setting their ways. Y'all better watch out. He says Gary really becoming president 2025. I don't know if he say so. That's what that man say. That's what's going to happen. He talking about uh, Gary, Gary Grinsberg. Over at uh, <clears throat> GG 33 numerology. Can pro white communities not alt right? I like that you specified that and pro black communities find common ground. Yes. Yes. But we first have to come to the table and say it's okay for everybody to have pride. When a white motherfucker say, yo, I got white power, y'all get scared. Y'all get back to the past. Only way a motherfucker have power over you is when you have no power yourself. So white power to white people, black power to black people. If black people had power, they wouldn't be afraid of white power. You just weak. Why do you think Trump is for the people? I don't think Trump is for the people. First of all, I believe that what Trump stands for to the people who voted for, who voted for him means something. And those ideas are valid. First Amendment, Second Amendment, Third Amendment. Take away my guns, take away my life. You fall behind these liberals, they take your guns away. I grew up with a white supremacist in Jersey City. I used to work with a white supremacist. The motherfuckers don't scare me, yo. I really don't care. Like, this is my thing about the whole, like, white power thing. I live in America. I was raised in America. Being raised in America not only makes you a brat, not only makes you spoiled, but it makes you an asshole. That's what it does. It makes you an asshole. And assholes don't give a fuck. So everybody claiming that they're American, but when somebody says white power or black power, you get all up in your panties. What happened to your American pride? We Americans, at least I'm from Jersey. So let me be specific because in Jersey, we really don't give a fuck about nothing. Some people wonder why my attitude the way it is. New Jersey is the asshole of the country. Most densely populated state. We don't give a fuck about nothing in New Jersey. The wildest shit could happen on the street and everybody will walk past like whatever. It's really hard to impress us. So when somebody says white power, I have the attitude of a nigga from Jersey. So what the fuck that shit got to do with me? That's my attitude. It's my attitude about everything almost. I care about people. After you stop caring about people, it's like, what are we talking about? Do I see a 2020 victory for Donald? I do. I don't think they got nobody. I don't think they got nobody that could beat Donald. And I might vote next election just so I could fucking... Be on social media with my, my mega, uh, sticker. You know what I'm saying? And just so I could piss some people off and, and woke some people up at the, at the, at the booth. I might stay at the election spot and just be just fucking tell them, changing motherfuckers votes. Like, nah, yo, like, let me school you while you sitting here waiting. By the time they get to the booth, they're gonna be like, fuck it, I'm voting for Trump. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I might do that. I don't know. Depends on how I feel in 2020. 609, shout out to 609, South Jersey, I see you. Camden, what up, what up? Shout out to my Camden people. Anyone in Jersey who claims white power is usually just ignored more than cared about. (laughs) Exactly, like we don't care about shit in New Jersey. And I'm like, I'm glad that I have this attitude because it's like, now I can teach it to people. 
Like, this is how you don't give a fuck. And not giving a fuck is a superpower. And I was born with it. We were born with it. Should Trump invite Farrakhan to the White House for a sit down? What would that do to the game? Trump should absolutely do that. But he won't. Because the white conservatives won't let him. Going back to what the point of this periscope was. They won't let you. You have to stay with his talking points. If you deviate from those talking points, you out the game. Somebody said electioneering is illegal. Thanks for the heads up. Bro, I got CoinBits thanks to you. Word. Get on the CoinBits app. CoinBitsApp.com. Hotep Jesus is from Jersey. I'm from Jersey, baby. CoinBitsApp.com. Hotep Jesus is coming to you with decentralized blockchain technology. We got features coming. I got a meeting in 45 minutes with my team. Shout out to Maher and Youssef. Got a, I got a meeting 45 minutes with my team. And we're going we gonna to get some things shaking in 2020. I mean, 2019. See, see what he said right there? He said, F Farrakhan. See what I'm saying? They, they don't know how woke. They, they don't know what Farrakhan can do for America, man. That's the, that's the first ally Trump need to make. Somebody said Trump went in 2020. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yeah, coinbitsapp.com. And my Jifatize app, shout out to my partner, Simone. Shout out to my partner, Simone, yo. She's the original founder. I'm a co-founder of the Jifatize app. Every time you see a funny video on the, on the um, Twitter timeline, download it with Jifatize for your iPhone. Yo, um, shit, I'm going to stay on for exactly, uh, 50 seconds. So if you got something to say in 50 seconds, say it now. Yo, shout out to everybody. Um, Hot uh, Hotep's been told you episode 30 tomorrow night here, Periscope, um, and also, uh, YouTube. Uh, any new t-shirt designs coming? Yeah, t-shirt designs coming. I got some new stuff coming. Um, somebody said Farrakhan spreads hate. Why do you endorse him? Because I don't think he spreads hate. You're just ignorant to the facts. You don't want to be woke. That's not my fault that you want to be governed by the people you champion. The same thing, the same people taking away your rights is the same people you love. Change it. Somebody said, elaborate. He said, I don't understand how not giving a fuck equates to liking Trump. Uh, eight o'clock um, Eastern Standard Time. Do I have affiliate programs? Yes. Tag me on Twitter. I'll get you in one of my affiliate programs for my book. How not giving a fuck equates to liking Trump. It doesn't. First of all, I don't know how you like came to that i can see how you kind of came to that but nah it, it, it's not like it's not that direct uh my point is people look at trump as if he has more power than he actually does they put a lot of trust in trump People love to put a lot of trust in Trump. Personally, I've put none. No trust in Trump. I've, I have no reason to trust him. I have no reason to really trust him. Like to, and I'm not saying like from a backstabbing point of view. I just, you know, I just, I'm not asking the guy for anything. I make me pleas and requests. But if he does something that he says he's going to do, I'll applaud it. If he doesn't do something he said he was going to do, I'm just like, whatever. I really don't care. I, it's like I, I, I go into this thing with zero expectations. You guys be voting and y'all go into these shits with high expectations. And I'll be like, yo, are we looking at the same country? Like when an elected official goes up, I'm like, ah. Uh, if something good happens, I'm just like, ah, yeah. It's like, oh, you know, I'll take it. But it's just like, 
do you really expect anything good to come from our government? <laughs> y'all really be believing this shit too, yo. Y'all really like, I'm sorry to laugh at y'all, yo, but it's just funny to me. It's like, if I don't laugh, I'm going to cry because I really feel bad for y'all. You know what I mean? So I just got to laugh this shit off because y'all just really like, you know, I say ignorance is bliss. Like, I really wish I could be as ignorant as y'all. Like, I really wish I wasn't just like aware because it's just, just like, I don't know, y'all. I don't know. Y'all weird. <laughs> Yo, I'm out, man. Yo, I hope y'all have a great day. I stopped exactly on 40 minutes, 440. Peace, man.